First of all, I mean, thank you so much for accepting my invitation for this meeting. Uh, I think it will be remarkable uh, to get the chance to hear your insights about arts and about the animation industry. Uh, I hope this conversation will help the people who has a special interest uh, on arts and animation in general. So, Alice, would you please tell about yourself a little bit about what you have been in these days and how are you feeling in general? Yeah, first of all, thank you so much for this opportunity. Like, um, I really appreciate it. And yeah, and it's the international, the world is kind of, in a way, kind of becoming smaller in a way. <laughs> so um, yeah, I'm feeling good. So I moved from Montreal, Canada to uh, Berlin, Germany about at the end of 2019. So um, I'm originally from Mongolia, actually. Yeah. And, uh, uh, and then as a teenager, I moved to Canada, Montreal, Canada. So I studied, I did all my formal training in Montreal at the same university. I studied, uh, I actually I studied fine arts and then the department is film animation inside mm. the fine arts program. And instead of, I mean, I was at the beginning, I, I was very interested in painting. And then by chance, I got into film animation. I didn't know anything about animation, like not at all. <laughs> <laughs> but then I learned that actually this program is more um, pushing students towards making independent films to become independent artists rather than working for big studios. So, mm -hmm. uh, and I, lots of people, some people changed their, their path. Some people graduated, they, they, they learned more technical stuff in order to have a job. I totally understand that. But I continued making my own films and uh, I stayed on my own path. Yeah. So that's basically what But uh, what what brings you in Montreal, Canada in the first place? Oh, some of my family are there. So I went there oh. as a teenager. Yeah. Wow. Cool. Well, thank you. I mean, uh, Alice, also we would be very grateful if you could reveal the uh, inspiration that you have in you doing your, I mean, uh, along your art journey. And how did you come up with the idea of combining paints and animation in the first place? Uh, that's a very good question. Yeah, so um, uh, when I was a student, I was, I mean, I was in this independent, super artsy school like <laughs> program. And uh, I would, we watched lots of independent animation instead of the films from Disney, for example. So we watched films, from the National Film Board of Canada. They're all independent, low budget film comparing to the big studios and companies. And uh, I also watched lots of films by artists, independent artists, such as Yuri Norstein, uh, the Russian mm -hmm. animation. The, yeah. right, the Russian, yeah, yeah, the Russian. Mm -hmm. And the William Cantridge, he's from South Africa. Yeah. Um, but he's more, his that background is very diverse. He was in theater, he does printmaking, he does all kinds of various different types of arts. Mm -hmm. He also makes animated films. And then I was very inspired by his work because he does this under camera animation, but very huge, huge paper. And then he used this charcoal drawing. And then he draws on the same piece of paper. He just draws and then erases the previous frame and then take a picture and then draws again. Like so frame by frame, right? You mean? Yeah, frame by oh. frame frame by frame animation, but without changing the paper. So we see all the traces. And uh, it's basically a time lapse photography of drawing. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I was very inspired by what he does. It's a perception of time. And then you see your, your own labor, the traces of your labor is there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I was very intrigued. So I did lots of exercise. I mean, at that time we, we had many exercises with different techniques like pixelation yeah. um, and the stop motion. We did drawing on paper, character design, all kinds of animation, but I was very intrigued by what William Cantridge did. So we had a specific exercise, just kind of inspired by his work. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. At the beginning, it wasn't working because I was trying the same. It's like huge. And then I was drawing super large on a huge format. And then <laughs> it's like, oh, <laughs> I could never finish my film. It's super long. And then I was thinking, how about make it smaller? And I want to use colors instead of just like black and white. I want to experiment with colors. And uh, I started with chalk pastel, acrylic, and all kinds of different materials. And yeah. then instead of, because he was working on the wall, like he pasted the paper on the wall, like vertically. 
And then um, I realized if I work with small, maybe I, I will just make the camera facing down. So it basically becomes under camera animation. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's a straight ahead animation technique. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. under camera technique. So basically like cut out or paint on glass. Mm -hmm. uh, so under camera animation is basically the camera is mounted on the top, fixed mm -hmm. at the same place. And mm -hmm. then underneath you have a table. And mm -hmm. then the artwork or the animation is fixed at the same place. So both of them, they don't move. Mm -hmm. It's in a way, it's like you, you see the labor, you see the traces of the drawing, you see the labor of your animation. Um, it's not super clean, like super beautiful, like 2D drawing or super clean 3D animation. But you have this handcraftness, you have this labor and handcraft is like a handmade sense and then you see mm -hmm. the texture and materials mm -hmm. that's why i found it very interesting uh so sand animation like working with sand like with a sandbox mm -hmm. or um paint on glass animation or cutout animation because it's 2d flat 2d yeah. uh yeah and then also with many layers like yuri norstein actually he worked with multiplane he worked with many layers but it's also under the camera um, so yeah, we did lots of exercises and uh, inspired by William Cantridge, I did lots of exercises and tests with colors. And uh, at the beginning, it wasn't working. It was like, just take, it took me forever. It wasn't working. And then, <laughs> but I kind of, I was stubborn in a way. I just continued, yeah. continued. Finally, it worked. Yeah. Uh, finally, I worked with oil pastel and many different mixed media, but uh, I just, it just took some time to really experiment. I think you are really stubborn because what you have doing, you have, what you have been doing with this kind of work, it really has like some kind of dedication, right? Mm -hmm. Um. At the beginning, I thought maybe under camera is so labor intensive and time consuming, but actually, I compared my workflow with some other animation artists working in two D animation, like digital or. Mm -hmm on paper or like 3D and I compared my workflow with them actually I found it's not that slow because as soon as I'm done with my animation I don't have post-production I don't have to go back and color oh, yeah. it yeah yeah it's pretty right. much straightforward I don't have to go back and redo something again so it's the advantage I guess as far as I assume the animations you have done uh, mm -hmm. you are using a piece of paper and camera also an auxiliary equipment for painting in the entire project, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. with this simple but also like uh, patience demanding style of work, you have to deal with the problems all by yourself. The outcome of this hard work and uh, dedication, we are witnessing breathtaking frames, Alice. Oh, what, thank you. What are the secrets maintaining your focus without losing it all? <laughs> that's another good question because <laughs> you're you're in animation yeah so um yeah i mean animation is just long and then i'm sure each person has story to tell like i mean yeah. you're in you're if you're in art or you make films you have a message to convey even though it's that long you somehow want to get the message out so you make it <laughs> <laughs> well i'm i've been doing some documentary movies you know the short ones here in Istanbul, and I really understand you, you know, I'm not that kind of skillful like you, but I can understand you, I think. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, well, thank you. Uh, you're welcome. Uh, other question I would like to ask, I mean, the common approach in your films, we are seeing a solid relationship uh, between nature and human, you know? You like to melt in the same pot, these two, you know, the nature and the uh, human. I think it may also connect it with your Mongolian part, right? Could you please talk about it a little more? I mean, how can we read your way of thinking? Yeah, sure. Um, so it's a, it's another good question. So um, earlier, I, yeah, earlier when I was younger, I just know that I heard about all oh, this because my grandparents were living as nomads on the nomads, Mongolian wrestling. Okay. So they gave me lots of wisdom. And then I heard lots of like stories and ritual and then how they lived with animals and nature. So there are certain rituals and uh, ceremonies that human respect nature, have a reverence for nature. 
Yeah. And then、um, I think it's very interesting. That's what I learned. I mean, when I heard when I was younger, but、mm-hmm. then when I grew up later, I learned that actually it's something in common among indigenous peoples around the world. Indigenous people, it's a it's a kind of tricky definition because I mean it's quite obvious in North America when you talk about indigenous people, it's、mm-hmm. the people who lived there before the colonization. I mean、mm-hmm. it's quite obvious in North America, but other parts of the world they are also indigenous people. For, for example, they have a particular lifestyle and cultural tradition, language, and、mm-hmm. uh, they also have a very specific connection to the land. To their land, nature, or natural resource, they have a very particular way of living and dealing with nature and animal,、mm-hmm. and have a particular language tradition. So they are all indigenous people. I would say outside of this colonial context.、Mm-hmm. So I would identify myself as indigenous person. I'm an indigenous artist. So、um, and then within this bigger frame, I realize that there are so many things in common among indigenous peoples around the world. Especially when I showed my last film,、uh, the feedback that I got is that even people in Brazil or in Italy they would say, "Ah,、oh, we had something similar." <laughs> so that's I, I found very interesting, and uh, uh, so my last film, I will just briefly tell you what it is so okay, that okay. you will be clear.、Yeah. So my last film,、uh, it's called The Fourfold. I interviewed my grandmother. So my grandmother basically talked about. Um, this kind of worshiping of mother, mother Earth, nature,、mm-hmm. and then Tengri. I think in Turkey、Tengri. you also have Tengri. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs>、um, so she talked about that. Basically, it's really like human nature and Earth and、uh, or deities together, like in the world.、Yeah. So you have respect for natural resources, and you have、um, you have respect for nature. And there are lots of wisdom among、uh, indigenous people because of this, especially、uh, started from the past twenty years、um, because of the climate change, and then、yeah. also this human-induced negative environmental change, like how they are damaging natural habitats in many places, like rainforest. So,、um, and then the indigenous wisdom, like among the traditional wisdom, and yeah. They become super relevant. There is so much wisdom in the contemporary moment, how humans could relate to nature, and it's very—it's the opposite of this kind of Euro Western centric point of view. I mean, the, of course, Euro centric and Western centric point of view is also slowly changing,、mm-hmm. but、um, they have this dominant model of anthropocentric. They put human in the center of the universe. Started from modernity. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, in the name of in the name of modernity, yeah, right. Yeah, and then they they would think that they would use exploit one planet and then exploit another planet. So that's the model that started from like like sixteenth century, I would say.、Yeah. But、um, so that's very like still very dominant. That's why I think that other outside of the Euro Western arena, for example, people. From Turkey and from other areas of the world, they there are lots of wisdom that is different from this Eurocentric point of view, and I think it's very precious in our、yeah. contemporary moment. Yeah, yeah. As you as you mentioned, I mean, they are seeking from another planet. You know,、mm-hmm. they think that、uh, all things in the world、uh, has to do with the people. I mean, but、mm-hmm. on the other hand, we have a nature to respect, right? Yeah. Not just like spoil it. Yeah, it's, it's very. I mean, in this way of thinking, what you have done with your works, it's really remarkable. Oh, thank you, <laughs> Alice.、Uh, mm-hmm. Some of your works you did all by yourself, and some of them you have done with the collaboration of others. I guess you always had the chance to do your part alone with your own mindset. You know, mindset.、Uh, a short movie called Sol- Solitude, I think.、Uh, You are starting your monologue with animating is a long journey of solitude, which I think is spot on expression.、Uh, do you want to talk about the main differences these two separate way of working? I mean, working with collaboration and working just alone. Yeah,、um, yeah, <laughs> of course. 
So you, usually I work just by myself, and it's kind of weird when I submit my film to a festival, for example, and then they always ask for a team member or like, and then usually the animated films, not just mine, but many other independent animated films, you just see the credits. It's always the same person's name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I feel. It's good that you have all the creative control as an independent animator. You you control basically you do everything. So of course you have this creative control. Mm -hmm. It takes your time and energy, but you're dedicated. You know how it goes. You don't have to explain that much to other people about mm -hmm. how you want it to be. I guess that's like one advantage. And another advantage is that I don't know how it works in Turkey, but in Canada they have this federal uh, funding. They, mm -hmm. they support more independent artists. For example, Canada Council for the Arts. Mm -hmm. they, they would like to support more independent artists. So the director has to be the animator or the main animator. Mm. Like an author, right? You mean, I mean. Exactly. Yeah. Kind of author, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So that's the, the model they support. Mm -hmm. I think it's great. Um, and, uh, but I did the new film. I think I started 2017. It was the first time I worked with a big team. <laughs> the film is called La Grande, and we got the distributor. It's going to be in festival starting from this fall, probably starting from this year mm. in September or something. Uh, it, yeah, it was the first time I worked with a big team. It's at the beginning it was really difficult, like because I have to constantly explain, and then I have to, yeah, I was playing kind of the role of a producer though, at yeah. the same time, and then there's so much other issues to do with like budget and money. Of course, I have a collaborator; mm, she's also the producer and co-scriptwriter. Um, Okay. And uh, so we have to talk a lot about how the film goes. And uh, yeah, it wasn't going well at some point at the beginning. Of course, we had some arguments, but um, throughout the whole experience, I feel like I learned a lot about how how to work with people. I think it's good to have, have some experience working with people. Yeah, you mentioned that also. I mean, it's also kind of hard to deal with all the problems with just yourself, you know, because we are talking about a huge dedication and hard work at the same time and you have a limited time for just you right it's also yeah. it's also kind of difficult but congrats i mean all the things you have done oh thank you um but the, i mean for the stop motion i mean this film is a stop motion film the foot mm -hmm. with the big team that's why it's a different story because we need people who specializes in constructing certain things i couldn't do everything it's kind of obvious it's not like the under camera i just paint this time it's like somebody built the houses, like there's mm -hmm. some miniature houses and oh, yeah. accessories. Somebody built everything. That's a separate mm -hmm. job. <laughs> <laughs> is that is that kind of art director in that movie? Yeah, we hired an art director. Um, she, actually, we were lucky. She studied miniature architecture. Mm. Wow, it's good. So, so how did you find yourself in a position that you have to uh, express everything you have in your mind, you know, to those people. So how, how um, can you deal with this? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mainly dealt with the artistic part, for example, um, because the producing part is the main job of the producer. Because the film was made in Montreal, everything was in French. All our <laughs> collaborators <laughs> were <laughs> francophone. Yeah. And um, so the, the producer, the co-producer mainly dealt with the budget and dealing with people and booking the equipment, etc. Mm -hmm. uh, I learned a lot through this process. It's really, it's really complicated, I think. I mean, from my experience, I found it quite complicated. <laughs> For the artistic point of view, I always had to find references. Do you also speak French or? Yeah, yeah, I, I speak. But oh, not okay. the French accent, the, the accent okay, from okay, Canada. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about the feeling of appreciation from others. Uh, you have achieved plenty of awards and uh, nominations, I think, from festivals all around the world, of course. Oh, thank so, you. So uh, how does it feel to be able to share your pieces of art in terms of this level of achievement? Well, if you ask me as an audience, I can say that I feel as a uh, feeling of the joys of spring, you know, like... Uh, when I see your colorful designs. And I think I'm lucky that I had the chance to be aware of Mongolian culture as well. Oh, thank you so much. 
So I, I think that everybody could share some of their cultures or mm -hmm. some of their ideas with the world. It's, uh, I think it's definitely very interesting. And uh, as I mentioned uh, earlier, like indigenous culture, or I would say indigenous animation, it's starting up in recent years more and more. Because instead of like going forward to the futurism or going for the super realistic looking 3D mm -hmm. or this kind of dominant narrative, like this very linear narrative, I would say indigenous animation or independent animation, they look kind of look for an uh, alternative way of telling story or telling their own traditions and story. And then actually in many different cultures, maybe the stories are not linear because it's based on oral history. Mm. For example, your great grandfather told your father something, a story, and then the story was passed on to you. So one, one, yeah, through this kind of form of communication, it's not super linear. It's not like, it's not like a history book from A to Z, like a super linear film from Hollywood, for example. Mm -hmm. But when there are this kind of forms of communication, like oral tradition, it's very like childhood memory. It could be linear because you, you perceive it in a different way. So in your, in your case, uh, your grandmother was the one who was sharing this, these stories, right? Yeah, I think I learned a lot from my grandma, grandmother, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I think we need to be grateful for your grandmother also. <laughs> oh, thank you. I will tell her. Yeah. <laughs> okay, please tell her uh, our like, good intentions and good wishes, you know. Oh, thank, thank you. Thank you so much for her too. Well, uh, as we're wrapping up this meeting, would you mind giving some of your recommendations to our animation studio, students? Because like they are just starting their journey uh, in 2020. Mm. Uh, and would you please give us some of your recommendations for them? Yeah, I yeah, totally. I mean, I, a lot of my friends that after graduation from this independent animation program, mm -hmm. a lot of them, uh, I think, started working in different studios in various skills. And some of them started working in like animation or art related domains. And then mm -hmm. some really continued making their own film. Even some of them, they have their own jobs. Mm -hmm. They always continued making something like really small every day. I think that I'm pretty fortunate that I, um, I because I kept applying for fundings from Canada for my project. Yeah. So it's like a model. I don't know how it works in other country. I mean, if it's possible, I think you should keep applying. And there are also artist residencies that support animations in, around the world. Mm. Mm, I know there is one in Denmark, I think. Um, I could send you the link. I mean, I remember, no, I can't remember the name, but there's some yeah. artist residencies that support uh, that support animation. So you could just keep applying, I guess. Well, thank you so much. I mean, if you can uh, send us the link, it will be very like grateful for us too. Thank you so much. How do you see your future in this animation sector? Do you have another plan or do you have like a big future plan? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> actually, I, I want to keep making my short films, but at the same time, I'm more, I'm also interested in other art forms, like traditional paintings, for example, or yeah. installations. So I'm interested in exploring how animation could be integrated in contemporary art in this sense, not just like, because a lot of people, they would just think that animation is for children, but uh, but that's just which is not, not true. Which is not at all. Um, I mean, yeah. well, in some cases, which is not at all, right? No. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so that's my interest. I have a little question, which I really like wonder, you know? Mm -hmm. In the first place, uh, well, it's kind of a dumb question, but I want to ask, you know, yeah, <laughs> well, mm -hmm. How did you get the ability to draw such a wonderful painting, you know? How oh, did, thank did you, you so How much. did you get this ability? Please tell us. I mean, please tell us your secret. Uh, <laughs> oh, thank you. I don't know. Um, I, I mean, I don't, I, I'm not, a, I, I don't have a background in painting or drawing. Mm -hmm. So, but I'm very interested in painting. So I would say I'm like self-taught, like I do ah. things like self-taught, like self-experimented way of working. Yeah. So you didn't you didn't get any like study at all? Like. Um, no, I didn't have formal training training in drawing or painting. And then I went to animation. 
so I would say I just it's a like self-taught or self-experimented way of working. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much, Alice. Oh, I think you. you are you are a very busy woman, and you lend your time to us. You know in some oh, way you. in your like busy time i mean i really understand you right you are doing your phd and i'm doing my master you know at the same time oh, no so, which is like really human consuming you know yeah for all this thing you really lend your time and uh, thank you so much for it oh thank you it's, thank it's you a, for this a, opportunity it's a real pleasure for us to listen your insights about art thank you so much Oh, thank you. It's my pleasure. No worry. Thank you. Alice, so uh, do you have a plan to visit Turkey? Yeah, I want the corona is over. When, when uh, people could travel. Yeah, and I'm not that far from Turkey now because Germany to Turkey is like two hours or something. By plane. Have, you, have you ever been to Turkey before? No? I've never been there. Well, well I mean, you, you, will, you will have a chance, I think, I mean, after corona. Of course, yeah. the situation is right now getting worse all around the world but let's hope for the first like fingers crossed you know <laughs> yeah maybe in this fall or yeah i think in this fall it should be better i hope we can see each other again like maybe face to face or like just some this kind of interview with your mm -hmm, like yeah. with your projects you know yeah sure definitely so thank you so much again and i'm gonna like stop recording you know mm -hmm. <laughs>